So the S&P 500 entered a bear market yesterday, meaning that it has fallen at least 20% from a recent high. These big drops in the market have people concerned about a possible recession. CBS News business analyst Jill Schlesinger is here in Studio 57 to talk about what this all means for your wallet. Uh, so Jill, mm. uh, let's talk about what the Fed is going to do this week, or perhaps not going to do. What are you hearing? What is the street expecting? Well, first of all, when we had had two interest rate hikes, right? We had one in March, it was a quarter of a percentage point, and then we had a half a point increase at the May meeting. Now, at that May meeting, interestingly enough, Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell was asked in his press conference, hey, is a three quarter of a percentage point hike alive and well? And he goes, ah, we're not even considering it now. I'm paraphrasing. Uh, now, with the inflation data that came out on Friday, with a lot of concerns around inflation being beyond the grasp of control for the Federal Reserve, it appears that a 75 basis point increase is on the table. I mean, it kind of was always on the table, mm -hmm. right? And now there are some whispers that the Fed is going to have to raise by 0.75 percent when they conclude their meeting tomorrow. Then again, they might do that in July. So what it does appear is that the Fed needs to convince the investment community, consumers and businesses that they got this. Mm. And right now, they have not done a good job of convincing us that they got this. Yeah, because it seems like instead of sort of easing onto the brakes, they think they have to slam onto the brakes. And of course, that makes people think, are we heading towards a recession? So what are the odds that we are heading towards a recession? You know, I, I was on the show on Saturday morning and I said the odds were high. And I think that freaked people out. I don't want you to be so freaked out because what we don't know is what the complexion of a recession might look like. I don't think we're heading into a recession tomorrow, but we had a recent survey out uh, by the Financial Times and the folks at the University of Chicago's Booth School, and they went to academic researchers. Okay, academics are not the folks who are in investment banks, and 70% of them thought that we would be in some sort of recession in the United States within 18 months. Mm. And I think that that's fair to say that next year does look like there's going to be a slowdown. Let's say it's not a classic recession. Let's say it's not as bad as everyone thinks. We are slowing down the economy, and it's happening on purpose. We cannot grow by 5.7% at an annualized pace, which was last year. We are going to grow at a slower pace this year, and we could actually contract next year. So I do think that's a high probability. So let's talk about the market uh, and what's driving this trend towards bear market territory. I, people will look and they'll say, look, uh, jobs are still, their jobs are available. People are spending, even though prices are going up. This is what's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, people are spending. The airlines, I mean, you go into an airport, it is fully packed. You go into mm -hmm. a store, people are shopping. Yes, they're hurting because the prices have gone up. But so if you believe in the fundamentals of the companies uh, that you're invested in, you've got a long term outlook, should you be worried? Well, I think that it's I, my mother always yells at me when I say don't panic or don't worry. She's like, I can't help it. I'm worrying. So I understand you're worrying. I get it. However, if you're a long term investor and you believe in the viability of the economy and corporate America over the long term, you invest in stocks. Now, that said, there are a lot of people who are throwing a lot of money at dumb things, okay? And in the last three years leading up to this year, we have seen extraordinary gains in the stock market. And that led to some froth in the marketplace. That froth meant that people had a lot of money on hand. There was excess savings during the pandemic. People were buying Bitcoin and people were buying mm -hmm. little stocks that really mm. had no earnings and they were taking flyers. You mean, and, you yeah. mean stonks, Stocks, Jill, exactly. What the bros, the bros <laughs> yes, call I, I, it. Yes. I'm happy to report to everyone that hold on for dear life actually is not the case because now we know that Bitcoin's down by 67%. Yeah. All this being said, that these moments, recessions and bear markets, are part of what it is to be a long-term investor and to be a part of this economy. We go through slowdowns, and that's why they call them cycles. We go up and we go down. I think the best advice that I have for folks, you know, I used to be a certified financial planner and I gave people advice, is that in these moments, it's good to remind yourself, what am I trying to do here? Mm. I am trying to save for my retirement, save for my kids' education. Mm -hmm. Would I make a decision today that is different than I made six months ago? Mm. If everyone was all excited about buying stocks six months ago, I've got good news for you about the only thing that is on sale in this economy are stocks. <laughs> That's the truth. There is a 20% sale right now. Yes. And by the way, if you own technology stocks 
and those stocks have been in a bear market for a long time. The, uh, the NASDAQ composite has lost about a third of its value since November. If you were excited about buying technology stocks a year ago, you should be thrilled right but now. Where's the bottom, though, I think, you well, know? Well, you know, there, the, I think that that's a great question because I think people get really nervous. You don't have to pick the bottom. Mm -hmm. You know, my dad was an old-time trader. I was a trader on the commodities exchange. And there's an old saying, which is they don't ri ring a bell at the top or the bottom. So what does that mean? As an ordinary investor, you stick to your game plan. Right. Mm -hmm. You've got your emergency reserve. You pay down your debt. And you keep putting money into that 401k plan. Yeah. That's the beauty of dollar cost averaging, meaning having a little bit of money coming out every pay period and going into a retirement account. It forces you to buy when you normally are really fearful. When your emotions are so, high. So, listen, in regards to inflation, though, because, you know, most of the people are not investing in stocks and watching it go up and down. They're worried about how much gas costs mm -hmm. or anything that they buy. And maybe they're also worried about, should I have bought a home, you know, last year? How hot, you know, these two predicted uh, increases in the interest rate. Will they be enough to bring inflation down, even though they may make it a little tougher for regular folks to buy the houses, the cars that they were hoping for? I think on the housing market, it's good news because in the housing market, what we are already seeing is activity is slowing down. Now, prices are going to follow. They just are. The, the cost of carrying a mortgage has gone up dramatically over right. the last year. Prices are still high. Prices are going to moderate, and you should be able to buy a home. That doesn't mean it's going to be easy. There still isn't a ton of inventory. I think overall... As the Fed starts really tackling these rates, and look, they got a late start. They should have likely, in retrospect, started raising interest rates maybe last fall when they, we knew that inflation was bubbling up. Inflation will slowly come down over the course of this year. It will not go back to where we were prior to the pandemic. Mm. Before the pandemic, inflation was running under 2% annually. We are now at 8.6%. Mm. To go from 86 to 2 is not happening not anytime happen, soon. Yeah. So hang on, beef up those emergency reserves, make sure that you have your own financial house in order, because guess what? That's the only thing you can control. We yeah. cannot control the bear market. We cannot control a recession. We can control the actions we take. So Vlad, when you say, boy, you know, I see the airports are really full, something interesting has happened over the past year or so, and that is that people built up excess savings from the pandemic. They're spending it down. Time to replenish, okay? Time to get your savings back on track because we went from a more than 30% personal savings rate in April of 2020 down to a 14-year low of 4.4% last mm. month, or in April, rather. And we got to get those numbers up again. I get it. We were all locked down. We felt awful. We mm. wanted to spend. You are entitled to do that. But now it is time to protect what you have, make sure that you've got a good job that is secure, and take care of those matters that you can control. Uh, Who do I blame for this? You, I, can, I don't can know. I, can, I don't, can I blame the Fed for not hiking I, interest rates? Can I, do I blame, you know, all the money for this COVID support money? So everyone, yeah. do I blame COVID? Do I blame okay. Let's do China? It. Should, we do, do I blame? should we do it? You want to do a blame game for a second? <laughs> I mean, people are going to, you know, well, first of all. It's, it, how did we get here? It, the, 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 it's a good question, Emery, because, uh, and, and it's tinged with politics. That's why we, it, 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 we don't always talk about it, because People are going to blame whoever they think is responsible. And generally, in people's minds, it means a president or well, an administration. Part of the but, reason that I'm asking that the way that I asked it is, is precisely because of that, because there isn't a single right. sort of right. okay. person so, or thing to blame. So let's think about the blame game in general. COVID was crazy. I mean, as an economic experiment, we have never seen a global economy shut down frozen yeah. like that, that we experienced in the spring of 2020. And we did not expect the supply chain issues that were created as a result of that. We did not expect that as we opened up, there would be an emotional need to spend on stuff, not on experiences. And on top of that, both the Trump administration and the Biden administration made certain decisions about spending and stimulus. Mm -hmm. And I think that it is clear, in retrospect, we had too much money flow into the hands of people. Some people who didn't need it. Some and people desperately needed the some money. Some people needed it. Yeah. Some people didn't need it. PPP was sort of like halfway successful, but halfway wasteful. So there's. So now we have COVID. We have too much money into too few hands, or too many hands, rather. Mm. 
And then I really do think that the Fed has to take responsibility for this. Um, I like Jerome Powell. I think they're really smart people who work in the Federal Reserve system. Um, I think that what often will happen in every crisis is that we look to the most previous crisis that occurred. This is called recency bias in economics. You go back to what just happened, and it informs what you would do next. It plays out in our personal lives because we'll say, oh my God, the stock market tanked. I want to be out of stocks. So that's where it plays out personally. With the Fed, the way it played out was in the Great Recession of 2008 and 2009, we re started raising rates too quickly. And that hurt lower and middle income Americans. It really did. And it dragged out the recovery for almost a decade. Mm. Let's not make that mistake this time around. And so they left rates mm. at zero for a, for a, long for a time. longer time yeah. than was probably necessary. So you're ready for the blame? Yeah. COVID, which is always a good blame. <laughs> I think too much stimulus and maybe not effective stimulus. Yeah. And third, the Fed. Mm -hmm. And the reality is, I, I don't want to like hang anyone out to dry. Mm -hmm. These are very difficult decisions to make in real time. Yeah. They really are. We yeah. never saw anything like COVID. We right. so, really you know, didn't. We yeah. never did. And, and you're right, Jill. It's interesting when you ponder, when you look back at it now, and you realize that the same conversation that we're having right now about what the Fed might do was what people were talking about during COVID, mm -hmm. right? And so if all of a sudden they had started to raise those interest rates, uh, people would have said, hey, what's going on? We could have been at this point, at this juncture, a year ago, which yeah, would have freaked people out because you're locked yeah. down at home and you worried about this horrible infection that is happening to everybody. Right. And now the Fed's raising rates and you're freaking out. And yeah. think about this. I mean, I mentioned this on the show this morning that um, we had an inflation report that was very hot on Friday. And then right after, about an hour and a half later, we had the University of Michigan Confidence Index that comes out. I have to tell you, that blew my mind. Because we got a confidence index that came in at the worst level in 50 years. Just think about all the things that have happened yeah. over 50 years mm -hmm. and how confidence could be lower today than it was amid COVID. It's lower than it was during the Great Recession. It's lower than we thought when the financial system looked like it was on the brink of disaster. It was lower than when we were in wars. So inflation is pernicious. Yeah. It's tough for people to take. I know it's going to be a long haul. We will get through this. We this will. is the beauty of an economic cycle. Yeah. There is a dip and we will come back up. Well, Jill, it's always great having you here. We covered a whole range, and I really appreciate because we've dominated a lot of your time. Thank you very Thank much. You, Thank Jill, you, Jill, as always. Love it.